Welcome everyone. Hey folks. Hey, hi there. Go ahead and drop the doc into chat as people join. Remember to mark yourself here. If not, I can go back later from the recording and fill in anyone. But... Wait a couple more minutes for people to join. So a little lighter than usual, but it's also summer in the Northern Hemisphere. So I know people tend to be less around for open source projects during that time a lot. So. Hi, everyone. Alex, since you just joined, I'll pick on you for this. Does uh, Zoom show you the chat messages from before you joined, or should I uh, drop the link to the doc in one more time before we get started? Um, I'm not seeing the previous messages in the chat. OK. Well, I will go ahead and drop it in. It's not quite five after, but I think that's um, probably enough to get started for now. All right, so now I got to find the right tab again. All right, um, so welcome to the June 2024 Guac community meeting. Um, this is a monthly meeting open to the entire Guac community to uh, discuss you know, what's new, um, to show off the cool things you're working on, things like that. Um, I don't see that anyone here is here for the first time. Um, so I guess we uh, will skip introductions, but um, I saw someone added notes on the uh, v0.7.0 release to cover those highlights. So whoever that was, if you want to take that away. Yeah, sure, I can start. Um, so uh, yeah, so we recently released the version 7.0.7.0. Um, I think we had some other smaller uh, you know, versions come out since then, uh, patch versions and stuff like that, but uh, nothing just to fix some of the bugs, but nothing else, nothing major. But the major things you know, uh, that were included in version 0 0.7 is the, uh, now that we moved to pagination for for every, all the different queries, right? All the queries can have, now have uh, paginated responses. So key value got updated so that everything is in sync now. So int and key value are both uh, uh, up to the, to the newest version of the GraphQL spec. So that's all there. Um, uh, this is an experimental. The next one is an experimental feature where we're. I think uh, John was on the call, but one of the one of the asks was like, can we add metadata to you know uh, packages, sources, or artifacts uh, via the via the CLI. Um, this was, again, this is experimental. I I haven't personally done much, much, much testing with it. Uh, this, it did, did get merged. Um, and, you know, we're looking for more feedback in terms of kind of how we want to use that and so forth. 
So that's why it's still in the experimental phase. So if you, you know, if you start testing it out and you see issues with it, you know, please create issues and we'll get a result. Um, and then the next one is the, you know, the experimental, again, the REST API. Uh, this is an experimental piece for the REST API, which is called the next, get next actionable critical dependencies. It's what it's supposed to do is it, it goes in and, and it queries your, uh, your uh, software environment and, you know, based on a specific algorithm that's got, there's a whole white paper that Nathan actually, I think, wrote up um, and it does some calculations and it determines like, hey, you know, based on this, based on the dependencies, you know, based on the vulnerabilities and all those other calculations, like these are the things that you should be paying attention to. And these are your most critical, you know, dependencies that you want to be looking out for. So like your top 10 list kind of thing is going to output. Um, uh, besides that, I think other smaller things like, you know, we improved the cycle and DX parsing. Uh, so, you know, transitor dependencies are are properly captured now. Um, the the All the client queries are now exposed. You know, before I think only a few of them were exposed as needed. Now, you know, they're all exposed. Um, we added, uh, I think this was actually one of the questions, this was one of the things that got asked a long time ago. It's like, okay, how do we, how do we maintain um, version migrations? You know, so like if, if the database ever changes, you know, how do we uh, how do we automatically migrate? How how is all that going to work? So Ant has a specific thing, um, you know, in the documentation it calls out a tool called Atlas, which allows us to do you know proper migration uh, of the schema. So if anything changes, it's going to keep create a baseline. It's going to allow and you know it creates a, a change uh, like a basically like a change script right in SQL. It's like okay, do you apply this and then this will uh, bring your schema up to date to the newest version and so forth. Um, you can also add in like, you know, like for example, some of the, if, if the field is not, op, you know, not optional, for example, you can put default data into existing things, all that kind of stuff in you know, Atlas will actually help you take care of that. So that got added. Um, the certifier was actually, uh, you know, as, as, as we were testing with more and more data now, uh, the certifier actually, uh, especially with Postgres, there's a limit to the number of objects that it can query and return. Um, so that's why, you know, we started using paginated queries everywhere now so that, you know, if they're, so this will, you know, you never run into the issue where Postgres is going to run into, uh, you know, like, oh, it hit the limit, for example. And a mon minor quick thing was the ability to collect from a directory within a bucket for the S3 collector. So those are the major ones uh, that got released uh, uh, for that latest version. Back to you, Ben. Hey, thanks, Parth. Um, anybody questions or comments on the, the release before we move on to the next topic? Sounds like a no. All right. Um, so next up, I wanted to highlight a few things that I've worked on um, that are kind of in the background, um, but I've done some work on the website. If you've been following along in the repo, um, and find my tab again. Um, so the blog posts now are individual files uh, instead of having one big uh, markdown file for all posts. Um, and part of that is because we, you know, we're shifting from the blog being a link to um, posts that are, you know, originally published on Kusari's blog or on Google's blog, things like that. Um, we want Guac related posts to live on the Guac site uh, primarily. Um, the other nice thing is like now that makes it a lot easier for, um, if people want to submit a little write-up of cool things they've done with Guac or, you know, how Guac has made their life easier or just any other content that might be appropriate for a Guac blog. Um, that's easier to do that because you can just create a file, creates a pull with the pull request, and you don't have to worry about, you know, conflicts if there are multiple uh, proposals in the works. Uh, I'll try to hit that same markdown file. Uh, and the other cool thing that it allows us to do more easily now is create an RSS feed. Um, I'll add the link into the notes here after the meeting. Um, but if you go to the Guac blog, uh, right across the top, there's the title, it says Guac blog, and right next to it is a little RSS icon uh, to the X links to the XML file. So if you, you know, use uh, Feedly or any so other sort of um, RSS reader, you can add that now and uh, not have to worry about going to checking the blog for news updates and things like that. 
we've, I've also gone through and uploaded all of the old meetings that were available in LFX to the YouTube channel. So that was primarily the community meetings. Uh, but now that we're having the maintainer meetings that happen every Monday um, happen you know, publicly, those are available as well. Obviously, you can go to the YouTube channel. I usually um, upload those videos same day or next day uh, and then add notes to the government re governance repo. Um, so it's really easy to find a you know, basically static version of the notes for any particular meeting. Um, and of course, you know, go through and uh, you know, use grep or ACK or other search tool of your choice if there's something you, you want to look for. Um, so hopefully that makes the you know the community a little more visible, more public, and a little more transparent, which I think will be really important as we try and you know, grow our contributor base and make sure that we're uh, being good open source citizens. And then the last thing I had in the assorted updates is a reminder that. We had talked about moving the list to um, OpenSSF.org's mail server, um, getting rid of the Google group. I kind of let that one uh, fall to the side and forgot about it for a little bit. Um, but I am going to pick back, pick that back up, and um, make sure the website gets updated to point to the newer groups, and then send out a message um, to the mailing list, just reminding people that hey, we're shifting over to. Uh, this location, please go resubscribe, and um, we'll you know probably wait at least a few weeks or maybe until the next uh, to the July community meeting before we uh, officially you know uh, end those lists. Now we may probably probably want to leave them open as um, archives, but not so people can subscribe or post to them anymore. So. Are there any questions or comments or anything about those uh, random assorted updates? No, nope. all right. And I see some people have um, joined since we started. So I'll just drop the uh, agenda doc in the chat one more time. Uh, so if you please just put yourself on there. Uh, Jeff, I see your hand is raised. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's low. Uh, so you said we're moving the mailing list. Um, have there been any posts to the mailing list? Like, I feel like, <laughs> you know, and Mostly, would anybody like to see more posts on the mailing list? <laughs> Mostly the posts have just been announcements. Uh, like release yeah. announcements and stuff, which I think is an important thing to continue to have, um, even if nobody's participating. Uh, speaking for myself, um, and maybe this shows my relative age in open source circles, but I would really like us to have a lot more discussion on the mailing list. Um, I think, you know, especially because it's a little easier, at least for the way my brain works, it's a lot easier for me to track, like, oh, I need to follow up on that email later. Then with Slack, where once it kind of scrolls past, I've you know it's paged out of my brain, and you know who knows if I'll be able to get it back. Um, it, you know, yeah, if it turns that, out like, that. So Go I ahead. found that you know discussions that need to be a little bit longer term tend to happen on GitHub, and then the short term, you know, the ephemeral stuff can happen in Slack. Um. I like the idea of the announcements. I don't know if, you know, we should call it Guac Announce. <laughs> but I guess we can wait and see, see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of things, and this is where, you know, just as a general comment, a lot of, you know, open communication, well, and not just in open source projects, but in general, like, there are different venues that are more appropriate for different types of communication. And it's always hard to like figure out how much do you want to segment the conversations into those different venues versus, you know, having them in places, you know, if we're talking about like specific, you know, bugs or, um, you know, proposals for like new features, um, a GitHub issue is a really good place to have that conversation. Um, I'm ho hoping that as we, um, grow the usage in the you know community that we get a lot more things that are like, hey, how do I do this again? Um, 
and I'm not sure that the GitHub repo is great for that kind of stuff, um, unless, unless it's a unless it turns out to be a bug. Um, and then again, like also like people sh just sharing like, hey, I found Guac and I used it for this, and I just wanted to thank everybody and tell you know tell everyone how wonderful this project is because it you know saved my bacon in this particular way. Um, so, you know, I'm definitely open to if we decide at some point that the mailing list is just kind of not very useful and saying affirmatively saying this is an announcement mailing list, you know, that's fine too. Um, you know, kind of see where where the community goes as we as we grow. Anything else on those updates? All righty. Then uh, the next thing is also my item. And I will share my screen here real quick, maybe. Um, so the next one, speaking of growing the community, um, there is a proposal. I've talked about it in Slack already uh, some, and it's um, been in discussion um, uh, in the issue as well. But the short version is I'm proposing to add two non-code topic areas to the existing contributing ladder, um, one for documentation and one for I'm calling it web and marketing. Um, so that handles things like the, so the social media accounts, which right now is just YouTube, but um, probably in the not too distant future will be uh, Guac having its own distinct presence on at least some social channels. Um, and then, of course, you know, the Guac landing website. And the idea here is, you know, right now the contribution ladder, I think, is really solid, but it very very much focuses on code contributions. Um, and I think there are areas to a uh, healthy open source project that, um, you know, are not in the code. Uh, and so this is a way to uh, codify that and start allowing for... Um, semi-autonomous contributions outside the code areas in the, the areas where the um, the project will need work. Uh, and so just uh, we can discuss this if there are any questions. Like I said, it's been open for a little while. So I'm just kind of throwing it out there one last time for the community uh, to offer input. Um, if, if there are areas that are not represented that should be now, I think, you know, as we grow the community, there will probably be more areas of contribution that we might look for. Um, but in the short term, I think these these two are things that are distinct and um, are ready now for the, uh, for the state of the community. Not seeing any hands raised or any mics unmuted, so I will take that as a good sign. Oh, all right, Jeff, go for it. Yeah. Um, so, what's the next step here? Do we do we have all the necessary approvals, or you know, if we're not looking, if we don't get any more comments to change or, or alter this? I think we're still one or two approver approval okay. short. Um, the decision by the maintainers was to go, I think, N minus mm one. -hmm. Um, so I uh, need to go through and do a, a census again real quick and make sure. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's basically, you know, now we've covered it one last time. I think the, the idea is for the maintainers to give a final vote and then um, assuming it's approved, uh, move forward. Anything else? All right. And then up next, um, we have a section for what the maintainers are working on. It looks like Parth added the first couple of items, so I'll turn it over to him again. Yeah, so um, one of the, I mean, it's kind of a simple one, but basically 
uh, the ability to specify batch size, right? Because again, we're using page generated queries. Um, so you can specify the batch size um, for both the certifier as well as um, for the certifiers. So if it's like, you know, if you're using the scorecard certifier or the OSV certifier, in both cases, you can specify the batch size. And if you need to add some kind of a latency, optional lat uh, latency to the certifier, so it runs a little bit slower if needed, right? For whatever reason, that's also there. Again, these are both uh, optional. They both default to whatever it was originally. Um, so if you don't specify anything, it's just going to default to whatever, how it normally ran before, but it's going to like, Try to ingest as you know. Try to query as much data as possible from uh, for the certifier, uh, but but uh, otherwise it's 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 going to behave as normal. Um, one of the other feedback was, and I think Brendan, who he may join the call later, depending on how long the call lasts. But Brendan Love from Google was mentioning that, um, you know, that some people were uh, giving feedback that the right because. The, the separation of ingestion from vulnerabilities, you know, they, it took a little bit of time for the vulnerabilities to actually catch up, right? So like, because the OSU certifier ran at certain times, right? It, it was a, it was in a polling mode. So it would run like, you know, after a few minutes, depending on how it's configured. So eventually they just, um, so we decided that, okay, let's, you know, to give instantaneous feedback. Again, this is optional. This is by, by default is gonna be disabled for open source. But if you uh, wanted to enable uh, on ingestion querying for OSV. Now it's going to, when the SBOM or whatever other piece of information gets uh, queried, all that package information, the pearls, whatever, will get uh, queried by OSV and that vulnerabilities will get ingested right then and there. It does add a bit of time in terms of, uh, uh, right, the ingestion times do increase because now you, you have to wait for OSV to come back for a response. Um, but it does give you the ability to like right away have the vulnerability information showing up for a new S bomb or whatever else you ingest. So that's that that got merged. But again, this all these pieces are still in, in progress. Um, so they haven't been released. Uh, in the next release, they'll probably be probably go live. Um, and then the the one final piece was the and this is again like no work has started yet. I think there's still a lot of discussion around how we want to do this, but. This is the the C sub the collector subscriber. If people are familiar with it, um, if they're not, you know, right, basically what the C sub is supposed to do, right? It, the whole whole goal for the C sub is that it's supposed to, as you're ingesting S bombs and other documents, it's supposed to take out specific key items, you know, like key values such as pearls, um, you know, source information, you know, anything that that it can find more information about. So it's supposed to take all these key pieces, key, you know. Uh, Pearls and whatever other things, and from the ingestion process, and and uh, the C sub is supposed to have collectors, right? The collectors will be configured, so like the OSV collector, OCI collector, um, depth dot depth collector, whatever else, they'll all be uh, subscribed to the C sub, and basically it'll try to pull in more information. So like for example, if it's a pearl, right? It's gonna go, it's gonna go to depth dot dev. It may go to OSV, right? Anything, uh, whatever it needs to go to. Um, if it's if it's like an OCI, you know, say an image or whatever else, it, it might try to go to the specific registry to pull more information down about a specific image, uh, things like that. So it um, the way it was designed initially, like it, it is not the most uh, robust and scalable. So we're we're still kind of going back in terms of like how do we want to like it's you know it, it works uh, you know really well for if you're if you're doing it for you know. Um, demoing around or just doing it for open source. But like in terms of like, you know, we want the goal for Guac is that we want it to scale at the end of the day. So, you know, we may go back to the drawing board a bit in terms of like how we want that, uh, how we want the collector subscriber to behave, how it should, you know, how, how can it be more scalable? How should it be, you know, how, uh, be more efficient in terms of how it uh, handles some of these, the, the queries that it's asking about, you know, in terms of sending information to the collectors. Like we, we don't want to send the same duplicate information to the collector if the collector is already collected at once, right? So stuff like that. So um, that's, there There was a design doc uh, or there was an original design doc. It was an original idea around this whole process. Um, there's still more talks about how we want to go about this. Um, so that's, that's still, again, like I said, it's, it's very much in the early stages, but I think we we do want to, you know, especially before a, a, a 1.0 kind of release, I think we want to get the, the collector, subscri collector subscriber in, in, a, in a better place. 
And then, so Brendan is not here, so I can briefly talk about this. I don't know if he may might he may might want to talk about it a little bit more, uh, and if he joins. But so in uh, we were doing some testing with Depths.dev, and we ran into an issue where the Perl spec for GoLang uh, specifies that it should. Right. In general, Perl, this Perl spec specifies that everything should be lowercase. <clears throat> this kind of goes against what Golang, right? Golang says, and the Go proxy and such, it, it basically requires, it doesn't, it, you know, it, it, uh, uh, you know, case sensitivity is a part of Golang. So meaning that if, if the package is named, you know, has something capitalized, then it should be capitalized when you actually go query for it um, or when you request it, right? Um, and right, and in the case of the Perl, everything's be, because everything is being lowercased, the name itself is being lowercased uh, by default by the Perl library. This causes, for example, things like depths.dev to fail the query because now, because it's lowercase, it does not recognize that it's an it's not a valid valid package. Um, but when you when you make, give it back the original name, then it comes back as the, and it returns a result. So there's some you know issues with the Perl spec, like how, how you know like how should we be handling some of these things? You know some of the ecosystems like should they always be lowercase? So yeah, I think like Ben like Ben jotted down there. I think that we're going to talk to the e, uh, the EMS ECMA. There's a working group for Perl uh, the Perl spec there. So I think the thought process is to um, you know, at least join the call, join that, join the call whenever that happens and describe our situation that, you know, that there is an issue created already on the Perl specs, on the Perl spec side. That's it. It's actually been open since like 2018. So this has been an issue for a long time. So I think other people have encountered it, but like nothing really kind of came out of it. So I think we wanted to talk to the Perl maintainers at the same time, like figure out from, you know, what, what should be done? What is the right thing to do for this? Um, and I think we're also talking to the depths.dev maintainers to see like, hey, how do we get some of this information? Because otherwise we're, you know, we're missing out on information that that is that could be valuable, right? In in, in a query down the line. So um, so that's that's just a quick quick note on some of those things. Thanks, Perth. Any questions or comments on those updates from anyone? Alrighty. Um, as, as a quick reminder, the uh, next meetings, we have the Guac Time office hours. Uh, the EMEA and Eastern America's friendly time is tomorrow. I believe that's at 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, and that's just a kind of an open, unstructured time to come in and chat about Guac. Uh, the weekly maintainer meeting uh, happens again next week on Monday. Um, we have an America's Friendly Guac Time Office Hours on Friday, July 5th. Um, with the uh, holiday the day in the U.S. the day before, I wouldn't be surprised if nobody is there, but, you know, it's on the calendar nonetheless. Um, and then the next version of this community meeting will be Thursday, July 18th. Um, all of those meetings are on the OpenSSF calendar uh, with um, links to the Zoom info uh, and the agenda docs and all of that. So that's the end of things that people have put on the uh, on the meeting agenda for today. Is there any other topics that anyone wanted to bring up while we're all here? I just just wanted to add. I I forgot to mention this, but if you if there's for the collector subscriber, if you had any kind of feedback or ideas, or if you're you know if they're if you're using it currently, like if you have ideas about how to improve it. So please, you know, we can talk during the office hours or, you know, you can come to the maintainer meeting and we can discuss it there as an agenda item. But happy to, happy to hear back from the community in terms of like how we should improve it. And if people are interested in like just learning more about it, some of the architectures, we can, we, we can talk about that in depth also in those office hours and such. Parth, would you be willing to write up a short post for the Guac blog describing what's been done for that and what kind of feedback you're looking for? And that gives us something to to share around to people too. Sure. Yeah.
All right, anything else? Thanks, everyone, for joining, and we'll see you uh, next month and on Slack and the mailing lists. Take care, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.